With all the free resources available, it has never been easier to learn cybersecurity. So on today's episode, we're gonna set up a fully isolated environment that you can hack on. Let's go. Welcome to Cyber Studies. If this is your first time here, my name is Giovanni. Thanks for stopping by. So last week, we talked about the popular hypervisor, VirtualBox. You can see the video right here. And basically, we set up one operating system on your desktop. And while that is pretty cool and already a neat feature, we're gonna build on that and take multiple operating systems and interconnect them with a DHP server. So we're gonna have some timestamps set up right over here. Feel free to follow along um, or jump around to where you need to go. So without further ado, let's get in there. All right, guys, so as mentioned before, we are gonna dive into VirtualBox tonight, and we're gonna set up some of these advanced features to allow us to have a fully functional, secure, isolated hacking environment. Now, this is a little different than going to say, like, hack the box or, you know, try hack me, we're using, like, OpenVPN. This is all isolated inside of VirtualBox. Uh, we're not going to leave it. Now, how we're gonna do that, it's gonna be a little bit uh, of, a, of a chore here, but we're gonna do it together. And essentially we have our listed machines here. We have Kali, our, our hacking, you know, VM distro flavor. And then we are going to find a vulnerable server. Now, there are a couple of different sites that you can get. Um, Metasploitable is another popular one. But tonight we're gonna utilize the VulnHub library. Now, VulnHub is really cool. I'm gonna pull this up in my uh, browser here. VulnHub is really cool because it's a community-sponsored uh, repository of these intentionally vulnerable um, servers. And so we're just gonna do that, just in case, I don't remember if I have anything in there. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna go to VulnHub, and that's gonna bring up right here. Pew. Now, one of the more popular ones, and everyone talks about this one, and we're just gonna, we're gonna lean into this cliche, is we're doing the Mr. Robot Box. Now, this one, it's, it's fun. Uh, it, it is based off of the TV show. Uh, and if you haven't seen it, highly recommend it. It's one of USA TV's best uh, uh, products, in my opinion. <laughs> so, uh, kind of familiar to the other Linux distributions that we did in the last video. Um, this kind of gives us a little bit of, uh, oh, a lot of bit of information here. It's gonna give us ways to download this actual um, vulnerable server. We're gonna have things like a brief description, little synopsis. Uh, the checksums right here, very important. Highly recommend them. Um, <laughs> and then lastly, it's gonna give you some, some basic details and uh, some little screenshots. Now, what makes VulnHub really cool is uh, like these other you know paid to hack services, there are a bountiful amount of these uh, walkthroughs. So if you are a beginner, I think this is like a medium based box, uh, regardless, if, you, if you're trying to figure out how to do this, maybe you're just polishing up on some skills. Um, there's like 20 or 30 different walkthroughs, different languages, blog style, video style, um, just ways to kind of like walk you through step by step. But like I said, so it could be a write up so you can take your time, uh, or if you need something like a video, you can actually visually see it, different learning styles, different ways of doing it. Um, so anyways, we're gonna go ahead and click on the download mirror here and, and, and for the sake of uh, brevity I've already downloaded this one uh, and I have it in my downloads folder and you're gonna click right here This is gonna start the download um, if you're more into like a, uh, a P2P flavor uh, You can download the dot torrent right here. No, it's the same exact thing um, so now we're gonna launch up do 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 some PowerShell and we're gonna throw that over here. And we're gonna do that same old get file hash and then algorithm. And I believe this was a, uh, we have an MD5 in there. So we're gonna do MD5, MD5, MD4, MD5. And then we're going to point to our downloads folders. Uh, there we go. And then we have Mr. Robot OVA. What did I do? Oh, is that, I can't spell. Yep, so I can't spell. <laughs> so let's let's fix that real quick. Do 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 do. 
Bingo. Yeah, it must be Mercury retrograde because I'm having so many technical difficulties. Uh, layer eight, as some would say. <laughs> All right, so we are going to pull up our Edge browser and we are going to do a quick comparison here. And again, the reason why this is important is we wanna make sure we're downloading what we think we're downloading. So we are going to scroll down here. I'm gonna verify that our file has not been uh, jeopardized. It maintains its integrity. And uh, like I said, maybe like the last like four or five of the uh, digits here should be fine. So we're gonna go through here and we'll go to E1. So E1 FD, E1 FD, one, two, one, two, D, D, C, eight. So <clears throat> with, with good confidence, these are the same files, right? So we can go ahead and exit out of there. And now we are gonna launch up our virtual box and we are going to open up your downloads folder and we're just gonna double click on that appliance. And what's gonna happen is the wizard starts going and setting up that virtual machine. Now, uh, it, it just labels it as VM. We're gonna go ahead and give it a little catchy of a name, Mr. Robot Box. And I like to main, I like to distribute at least two uh, cores to all my stuff. Um, 512 is fine. One core is probably enough, but just for, you know, the sake of it, we'll do the same. So, okay, so we're gonna hit import. And now what we've done is we basically pulled in a Ubuntu-based vulnerable box that is themed to look like the Mr. Robot TV show. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Now, uh, that's doing its thing over here. It's pretty quick. I think it was like 700 megs. So not that big of a file, especially for, you know, a, a server and running an operating system and everything. Now, that could be the end of it right there, right? Uh, however, we really can't do anything with it right now. Um, so what we need to do is we need to have our virtual machines interconnected. And I've kind of hinted a few times already. We're gonna do that by creating an internal network and then we're going to make a DHCP server so we can actually issue out some of those IP addresses. If we don't do that, they are isolated together, but they can't talk. Um, so it's very important that we do that step. So let me dive in here real quick. All right, so let's set this up. So we go into here in our settings, go into network and bridge adapter. It's my least favorite setting. Um, I myself have not found a use case for bridge adapters. You're basically taking a virtual machine and you're putting it on your router, basically. It can talk to your television. It can talk to anything on your router. Uh, so it's a big no-no, not a fan of it. Uh, we're gonna do internal network. And then for this, we're just gonna go ahead and create something catchy like Cyber Study Lab, patent pending. Um, <laughs> registered registered uh, trademark. Um, so we're gonna hit continue or okay. And so now it is on its own internal network, um, literally isolated by itself. Now we wanna go into our Kali box and we are going to do the same thing for it because right now it can talk to the internet it can do all of these things it's treated as you know a, a, a real computer uh, on our host so we're going to set it up to the internal network and that's another one i have we're going to put on the cyber study lab so cyber study lab for mr robot phone box and then the cali linux uh, box there and then for kicks and giggles, we're gonna do the same thing for the Remnux box, just so I can set it up properly and then we'll, we'll, we'll dig into the uh, Mr. Robot box. Um, so we're gonna set this one up for internal network as well under that Cyber Studies lab. So now all three of these virtual machines are now compartmentalized into this one internal network. Um, again, they don't have IP addresses, but they're all there. So we have those set up here. And let's just go ahead and launch a few of these boxes. Um, I know the first time I saw this, I was a little confused because it, it kind of would make sense like, hey, if they're both internalized to each other, they could talk to each other. Uh, and I'll just show you um, just so all the bases are covered. <laughs> My Windows machine is running two separate Linux you know, machines. <laughs> I think it's pretty cool. So 
this is a pretty uh, fresh install of Kali. So uh, basic Kali Kali username and password. And Remnex is pretty open. Now, I have just both side-by-side uh, -side instances of these uh, virtual machines running. And I'm just gonna show you what it looks like when they are running uh, in this internal network. And then over here. <clears throat> okay, so I have both of them pulled up here. And uh, as you see, neither of them have a uh, IPv4 or uh, IP address uh, issued to them. Um, and so that's where our DHCP server is gonna come into play. Um, so you would see that normally like right above this uh, spot right here. So anyways, we are going to dig into our, um, virtual box, there it is. Okay, so we have those two machines running right now. Um, and we're actually gonna shut those down real quick while we do our DHP, uh, DHCP server. So now that we have those uh, two uh, machines down, we're gonna pull up our command prompt. So pull this up here real quick. Pew. All right, so we have command prompt, and we're also gonna need um, the file path that we have uh, VirtualBox installed on. And so I have it right here. We're gonna go ahead and pull into this. And the reason why is because once we dig into the VirtualBox um, uh, program file, you'll see we have all these different executables, uh, the uh, dynamic links, what have you. We have a bunch of stuff in here. So we are going to pull this path right here, and then we're going to go into our terminal, and voila, and we're gonna dir that out real quick. All right, so there's a lot of stuff going on here, right? <laughs> um, so we are looking for the VBox Manage, uh, as mentioned. So we are going to uh, dig into, down here, so we do VBox Manage, and uh, it, all over the place, <laughs> uh, all sorts of stuff. Um, so we are going to, we are looking for our DHCP uh, server suite. So right here, perfect. So DHCP server management. Um, so there's a couple different options we have here. We can add things, we can remove things, uh, we can list them all out, right? And so we wanna make sure that we're not gonna step on anything. So we wanna list what we have already. So we're gonna do VBox, manage, and then we're going to, let me make sure I don't fat finger anything. So VBox manage, uh, list all of our DHCP servers. And right here, all you see that we have is the, uh, the, the host only um, uh, network. So we are going to add our own. So we are going to do VBox, oh geez, VBox manage. Uh, and I always tab complete just to make sure I don't misspell anything. Um, we want DHCP uh, server add, and then we're gonna do tac tac network. Uh, and that's gonna be equal to cyber study lab. And I came up with that name over here. We just went into our settings. Um, down here, this is our internal network name. And actually we probably could just copy and paste that in there to make sure it's spelled the same way too. Um, let's just erase that real quick and then paste, beautiful. Um, and then we want to give it some IP addresses. So server tech IP is going to be equal to 192, uh, every time I always do that. Uh, Make sure to uh, turn off or on numlock, whatever is the appropriate one for you guys. <laughs> um, so I went and removed it. So let's just add it. Because uh, again, I want to show you guys step by steps. I don't want you to miss anything here. So we have VBox uh, DHCP server. We're going to add this network. And then we want to do the flags for IP. So we're going to do. Um, server so server ip and that's going to be equal to our first ip which is reserved and cannot be used um, then we're going to do our little net mask right. 
And uh, as you can guess at this point, uh, I already did all the subnetting on this. I hate subnetting, uh, so find yourself a good calculator. <laughs> uh, so we have our net mask there. Um, we're gonna do our lower IP, and we're gonna set that over here to our first usable IP address. So 192.168.3.2. And then lastly, we're gonna put our upper range. This is the, the last one we can do. And for some reason, my word wrap is not working right now. Um, so upper IP is going to be equal to the last of our subnetted uh, space here. 68.3.254 and then we're going to enable this bad boy and so fire all right cool and then just like before we're going to verify um, with our listing of our dhcp servers and bingo there we got it so we have right here everything that we need to start issuing out those ips to our isolated network so now what we're going to do is we're going to verify that everything is set up correctly and so we have our um, our two uh, test buckets here. We have uh, Kali on the Cyber Studies Network, and then we also have the uh, Remnux box. And uh, the only reason we're doing these two is because the Mr. Robot box, you'll find out, um, you have to actually figure out the IP. They don't just tell you on the front page. Uh, you're basically breaking into their website. Um, so we're gonna launch up these two one more time and we're just gonna do a basic like ping and see if everything's talking to each other. Um, the, the, the end game here is that we do not want to be able to get on the internet. We want them to be isolated off of our environment, but being able to be issued IP addresses so we can start doing some stuff. Uh, you'll find uh, if, if you don't have an IP address, you really can't do anything. <laughs> um, you, you can poke around and see what kind of tools you got, I guess, I don't know. So, uh, as we know, Cali Cali for username and password. Remnux is just good to go. And then while that one's loading over there, we're gonna do if config. My fingers work. And wouldn't you know it, right there. That's looking good. And then what do we got over here? Let's do some sudo if config. And then of course, because you're the new Cali. And look at that, issued right there. And, and we can, um, you know, just to really beat a dead horse here, we can ping this 192.168.3.2, and we are getting some movement, control C, and then vice versa, why not? <laughs> so we're gonna go into here, 192.168.3.3, and I got that from over here. We're getting the movement, very cool. And then we want to verify that we do not have internet access. So you would think, oh no, but that's actually a little default piece there, a little Google action, and no internet. <laughs> so we are now isolated. This machine can talk to that machine, and that's it. Nothing more, nothing less. Um, so now if we wanted to dig into um, some Kali, maybe we can run some Nmap, I don't know, and find some IP addresses for this Mr. Robot box, kind of dig into it. Um, as mentioned, there's so many walkthroughs, I feel it'd be an injustice to do uh, a walkthrough inside of this little tutorial. <laughs> So there you have it, folks. Setting up an isolated hacking environment for VirtualBox. Whether it's Windows, Linux, what have you, the principles are all the same. We have our guest operating systems and an internal network that connects them together. So thank you so much for your time. Please consider liking and subscribing and leave a couple comments down below so I know what to make videos on next time. Have a good one.